Okay, off we off we pop. Are we popping off? Where are we Indeed. going? Shut up, P dubs. Right, so first, before we get into the into the teams where we think they'll be changing, I should just mention, obviously, we won't be talking about McLaren or Ferrari because they are confirmed for next year, unless there's something shocking about Ferrari that I don't know about. But that should be Vettel and Leclerc and then Sainz and Norris, which I think we're all we're all in agreement with. We all think it, that's, that those are good lineups for next year for both teams. Apart from Vettel, but yeah. I was going to say, Vettel is not good for Charles. Uh... As, well, as I said in the Sebastian Vettel video I did, which you will see in that corner up there, um, I think that he still, if, if he can find his form, I think Vettel will be, Vettel is always a positive for me. But yeah. Anyway, so, and then obviously we, we, we both, we all love Science and Norris, don't we, at McLaren? So that can, that we're fine with that. Smooth operator. Yes. Smooth operator. Yes. Right. Good. So. Shall we begin where I think obviously the big talking point in the current silly season is obviously it is Mercedes. So start with Mercedes man himself, James Derrick. What do you think will happen and what do you want to happen with Mercedes? They're both the same. Bottas is going to stay there with Hamilton. That it's just was, I'm pretty sure Toto even said recently that um, that's the decision he had made. I'm pretty sure. So that's what you think will happen. What do you want to happen? Do you want it to still be Hamilton and Bottas, or do you want? Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. no yeah. You, you wouldn't want to see Ocon, or maybe even dare I say it, George Russell. No, I really like Bottas. So fair enough. It suits his dad, isn't it? So you can't really. Oh yeah, it. that is true. That you is can't. True. You can't have a go at Susie's dad. No, you can't have a go at Susie's <laughs> dad. That was. Well, Susie's is scary enough as 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 it is, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, and just and yeah, just to say, I completely agree with you. I think it would be far too. It's. The idea of Ocon racing for Mercedes having been out for a year is just ludicrous. And I think we'll come on to him in a bit. But if he were to give, be given that Mercedes seat, I think that would be an injustice on Valtteri. Because whilst, that, whilst Bottas isn't on Hamilton's level, he's still a really, really good driver. And he's the perfect number two for what Mercedes are doing at the moment. Yeah, but then he's often quicker in qualifying, which is normally unheard yeah, of exactly. in a team where Lewis is. So. Exactly, yeah. So I think the idea of Bottas being sh being booted at the end of the season is mad for me. And again, I agree. I think and hope that it will be Hamilton and Bottas next year. Um, Pete, obviously, so what, what what are your thoughts on Mercedes? Um, I think they've got to give Valtteri some assurances this season. Um, but I'd like I'd like him to be at Mercedes next year with Hamilton and I also think that's what's going to happen Ocon can't come in he needs another year at a shitter team before anything happens also his contract runs out in 2021 doesn't it Bottas's uh, 2020 no, I'm pretty sure it, every contract he signs is for one year but with the option for next year as well I think that's how it's always worked with Bottas uh, well I don't know I'm not contracted but no. I, I would pref I would prefer to see Bottas there for another year, and then maybe I'll come come out come in afterwards. That's that is exactly what I think will happen. But obviously that's for the future. So we're all in agreement. Hamilton and Bottas at Mercedes next year. Can I make one small comment? No. <sighs> yes, Why? I can. Um, about the future, I think that there's no point changing Bottas for Ocon because they'll probably want Russell in in two years. So there's no point bringing Ocon in for a season then just to bring Russell in for the next one. Yeah, mm. true. True. Is Russell on Mercedes box yeah? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh there ooh. Ooh, spicy that. Indeed. Indeed. Right. So, we've done Mercedes. Obviously we're not doing Ferrari, so let's move on to another con uh, the the prop I think one that is definitely up for debate is Red Bull. <gasps> dun, dun, so, dun. P Dubs, do you want to start on this one? Because we because you weren't you weren't with us for the Gasly Albon debate, so it'd be interesting to hear what you have to say. Oh well, can we talk about Tal Russell at the same time because it's going to be yeah, all four, yeah 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 all yeah. four drivers, isn't it? It's ba yeah, they're oh, basically oh, they're one three. and the same. So Verstappen, obviously number one at Red Bull now. Um, yep. I would like to see Albon retain his seat. Uh, uh, Red Bull, but I don't know how well he's going to do this coming half season. Yeah, it's difficult to say because we just we just don't know what Albon is going to do. He could be crap at the same time. He could he could do a Gasly, or he could be 
like a Daniel Ricciardo. So you could have two amazing drivers racing for Red Bull. Mm. So it's it's just it's it's so difficult to say with Albon at the moment because we just don't know how he's going to perform. Based on his Toro Rosso performances, he's got an awful lot of potential. But yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. In regards to Toro Rosso and their drivers, I think Kvyat is going to be absolutely fuming. Um, having already raced under Red Bull and having got that podium and being arguably better than Albon throughout the first half of the season, he's going to be utterly disappointed he didn't get that call up. Um, I can't see Gasly going back up to Red Bull. Um, he'll maybe have another year and then probably get dropped because they're quite ruthless or, you know, swap teams, whatnot. Um, so you think that basically what's happened to get what happened to Kvyat back in 2016 and then 2017 is going to ultimately happen to Gasly as well. It's a, it's a repeat. Yeah. I mean, we just, me and Derek discussed this when we talked about Albon and um, Gasly about K- about Kvyat. I think what Red Bull have done is actually really smart because they're going to have Albon, Kvyat and Gasly all with experience in the Red Bull and then going into 2020 and 2021, they'll have direct comparisons between the three drivers because they'll know about Kvyat from 2015 and 16 they'll know about Gasly from the start of this year they'll know about Albon from the end of this year yeah I'd, I'd, it's going to be between Albon and uh, Kvyat for that number two driver at Red Bull and then obviously whoever doesn't get in the Red Bull will be in Tara Rosso partnering uh, Gasly because I don't know I just can't see him going back up now after being no neither axed um, so yeah I'd, I haven't really got a preference for oh I don't know, I guess Albon's my preference, but either either or. I would for me I would I would say I think it will be Verstappen and Albon. But I would sort of like it I think I would like it if Kivyat got got given the nod. That's what I'd I'd love to see Kivyat back like if he has a has a solid end of the season. If Albon's just still a bit meh and then Kivyat's obviously got the podium, he it could potentially help Toro Rosso finish fifth. I think that which would be their best, if not if not joint best finish of all time, I think then it would be great to see Kvyat back in a Red Bull. But that, I think that might be wishful thinking. I think they would stick with Albon. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll go with, I want to see Verstappen and Kvyat, but I think it will be Verstappen and Albon in 2020. James Derrick. Yeah, I think uh, it's tough because we obviously haven't seen Gasly back in the Toro Rosso compared to Kvyat, and we haven't seen Albon compared to Verstappen so I think it'll be Albon and Verstappen I think that they I think that Red Bull think that Albon's going to be better than Kvyat and so that he can kind of use the rest of the half of the season as a test for next year mm. um, I mean yeah if you just look at the way Albon's throughout for, as the season's gone on as Albon's just slowly come back against Kvyat and I think I remember we said it was I think it's now 4-1 in the past five races to Albon in terms of qualifying yeah, I think as well the thing with Albon that, that they're really impressed with is how quickly he adjusted to the Toro Rosso. You know, he was he didn't have well he he was on a rookie license, wasn't he? At, yeah. Uh, winter testing and how quickly has he come to terms with an F1 car alone as it's his rookie season and then you know with the Toro Rosso. So hopefully he should pick up driving the Red Bull pretty quickly and that's why I think they put him in. And then I think it'll be Kvyat and Gasly. Uh, Toro Rosso because they just don't have enough drivers anymore. They've kind of gone through all of their junior team. Let's move on to Renault. <laughs> uh, is it Renault? Uh, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, let's, yeah, we'll do Renault. So, we, so again, we're all we're saying Verstappen and Albon, and then Kvyat and Gasly at Toro Rosso. Yep. Oh, Sergio right. Sete cameras in the Red Bull junior team, and he's third in the championship. That's interesting. I didn't even. Well, maybe if Gasly does crap in Toro Rosso, Sete camera might come in. Ooh. Right, Renault. Obviously, Ricardo will be in one of the seats. Which oh, do we? Are we happy with that? No, I wish Ricardo would go somewhere else because he's too good for Renault. Yep, second that. Uh, yeah, I, I agree as well. But I also think that yeah, actually no, I agree. It's unless unless Renault can get can pull their get the finger out, then I think Ricardo's talents are just being wasted, and we'll see it like an Alonso situation only worse because Ricardo's never been able to properly challenge something which I think which we all think he can do quite easily but who do we think is going to be partnering him Ocon. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw it out there I, I, yeah as you just said I think it will, it will be Esteban Ocon because obviously Renault 
did Ocon a little bit dirty last year because he was going to go there and all of a sudden Ricardo was there. It's like, okay, no, we're going with Ricardo. And that's really why Ocon's not in Formula One this year. So I think, I reckon Toto has been pushing down on Renault from above and saying like, right, you need, you, if, you're not, if you're not having Hulkenberg anymore, it's going to be Ocon. It just makes it complicated, the fact that Toto is his manager, though, because Toto's also a team principal, so it's just one of those mm. things. And then obviously Renault will be hoping to challenge Mercedes in the future, but if they've helped nurture a driver that goes on to become one of their champions or one of their more, more dominating drivers, we never know, that Renault will be like, well, do we want to do that? Who's going to take, who would not, who would take over other than Arkan? No one. I think it's either uh, exactly. Ocon or Grosjean, be. isn't it? And no one wants Grosjean. I don't think he even has one Grosjean. So, no, Grosjean. Renault wouldn't want Renault wouldn't have Grosjean. They're too no, busy. their cars break down already. I, I think it's see... either Ocon or Hulkenberg yeah. at Renault. But why would yeah? It's the thing. The thing for me with Hulkenberg, I've, I was always a big fan of his. But just recently, like when he crashed out at Germany, I was just like, you know what? You know what, Hulkenberg? You don't have a podium. You need to try and be as sensible as possible in races like these. And he just, he fucks it every single time. It was when he and knocked he... out Russell. I was like, nah, that's it. I'm done with you now. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was bollocks, that was. <laughs> You're still slightly in the room, Peter. Hulkenberg, do you think he'll stay at Renault? No. He's no? Not. Uh, he needs to go somewhere else anyway, in my opinion. Where would he go to, though? That's the next question. So I think that this brings us very neatly on to Haas. We, we, we've mentioned Grosjean, we've mentioned Hulkenberg. The talk is, the, the, the paddock talk is that Hulkenberg is on his way to Haas. Yeah, but then he hates Magnussen, so I can't imagine but that. Then, yeah, that, yeah, and that's the thing. That's why, that's why I think the, the sort of Renault-Haas situation right now is possibly the most interesting one of Silly Season. Yeah, I think either it's going to be Magnussen and Grosjean, or it's yep. going to be a totally new lineup for Haas, which I think is fair. And I wouldn't be mad if Perez ended up with Hulkenberg at Haas. Well, that's 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 a really good suggestion because Perez and Hulkenberg got on really well at Force India between fourteen and sixteen. They've got they they got the team from they were sixth, then fifth, then fourth, and then obviously Ocon came in. and They stayed fourth, but. The combination of Perez and Hulkenberg, they're two really solid drivers. My only, in, that, in that situation, my only question mark, mark would be over Perez. Like, would you end up with a, another type, another sort of Grosjean character, just perhaps a little bit less extreme? I don't know. I th you just have to hope, I guess. You can't... Like, Perez hasn't done that much horrible stuff this season. And I think that True. Ocon just used to get under his skin. So, I think that... Yeah, I mean, he is... He is currently being outscored by Stroll, which is interesting. Although he is winning twelve nothing in qualifying. Yeah, I mean, I think you know we've had this conversation. Well, you've discussed this on the yeah. Stroll video, but I think you know hands down, Perez is better than Stroll. Um, Easily, yep. Yeah, and I think him and Hulkenberg would make a great combination. And they both, I think they both need to just head off to new teams. Sorry, we started talking about Perez when we weren't anywhere near yeah. Racing Point. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, but I mean, I mean, Haas and Racing Point, I think, are directly are there next to each other in the championship. So that brings them, that can bring them nicely into it. For Haas, I think that what's likely to happen is it to probably just be Grosjean and Magnussen again. But what I would like to happen is it to be Perez and Hulkenberg. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean. I think I, I agree that I think they will stick with Grosjean and Magnussen again, but I think they'd be idiots to do so because we've we've again we've discussed in previous videos how we all, we all don't really like either of them. Grosjean's a whingy bastard and Magnussen's just dangerous. There is also that there is also the fact that um, Haas could look at look at it and say, all right, let's just give Grosjean and Magnussen one more year. Then we'll be monitoring other drivers to perhaps look to doing a full change for 2021, or would they try and change it now so they're ready for 2021? I think they'd try and change it now. You've got to change it now. Yeah. You don't want to have another year of just doing crap like they've done this year. Exactly. I know yeah. it's not necessarily entirely the driver's fault, and there has been issues with the aero and stuff like that. But they haven't helped you know, themselves. No, definitely. That's exactly that's exactly right. Like, yeah, you got to yeah. do something. It, yeah, I have to. I have to completely agree with Derek. I, I think. I think it will be Grosjean and Manxon again. But I really hope it's at least Hulkenberg, and I think Perez is also a really good shout. Okay, where would Hulkenberg go if it wasn't for Haas? 
No, I it's either there or Renault, I think. What about no. Williams? Or what Sauber. About to... Maybe Sauber if Giovinazzi goes, but... Uh, I, I don't know, maybe? I don't... It's it's tough to say if the game's at Alpha. I can't see him going back to Williams. Yeah, I can't well, see him it... going back to Williams unless he gets paid a, a lot, but he won't because it's Williams, so... Mm-hmm. Mm. It's just, I think if, I think this brings us on nicely to actually actually no, hang on what, what are we saying for for racing point obviously Lance Stroll will still be there but who forever will... ever forever yes forever ever forever um, ever if if I think if Haas go down the route of um, Perez and Hulkenberg I think you could end up seeing Magnussen at racing point I agree I was just about to say that because again ma- again we don't we're not massive K Mag fans, but at the end of the day he's a he's he's still a, he's still a good driver. He's a, he can if, if the car's with him, he can be the one that can comfortably finish in sixth place. And whilst yes his driving is dangerous, but he make but it's always it's fair. So I feel like it feel like he still deserves a shot in F one. He still deserves a chance. Yeah, I don't think K Mag should leave F one. I think Grosjean should. I think he should go to Formula E or another place and just kind of refresh his brain a bit but i think yeah k mag should probably go to uh, racing point if that ended up happening i can't see either hulkenberg or k mag saying like well yeah we'll race to against each other or we'll race with each other that's fine no like imagine well how many issues have um grosjean and magazine have had this exactly, year yeah. multiply yeah. that by 50 that's probably nowhere near as many altercations i think as I, I think hulkenberg would, would be more respectful on the track, but I just think the off-track relationship just wouldn't work. What's Jack Aitken up to at the moment? Could he be in the frame, or is it too soon? No, too soon. Too, too soon. soon? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, doing, he's doing go-casting videos with WTF1, so I don't think he's quite ready for F1. We don't talk about WTF1 here. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got the reason that Latifi before Jack Aitken. They're both through. great drivers as well. Yeah, they are. They're walking away. Well, De Vries, anyway, is walking away with the Formula Two uh, title. And is it Latifi just behind him? Because obviously Latifi has strong links to Williams. It's not necessarily like like close. There's thirty points in it, but I suppose it's not. It's not an awful lot in Formula Two. So we, yeah, so we're, so, so we're banding about these F2 drivers. I think we there's there's one name we haven't mentioned yet. I think this could bring us on to a little team called Alfa Romeo. Obviously, Mick Schumacher. Yeah, well, no, that's not this year, but like he needs no. another year in F2 and then a year in a slow team. And then I actually I wouldn't be surprised if you did two more years in F2 and then straight to Ferrari. Straight to Ferrari? Ooh, Mate, they love him. They, they love him. That is a very bold call. It is a bold call. I would, I, I would, be, I would be less surprised if... We see Schumacher in Formula One next year in place of Giovinazzi at, at Alfa Romeo. Next he... year, no way does he have enough super license points. Nope. I've They're... got one for you, Marcus Ericsson. Ooh. Is, uh, he, he is still set. He is still back. He's their test. He's their test driver, really. He's, he's the test driver and backup driver, but he's also racing in IndyCar now, and I think he prefers it over there. Or certainly, according to an article, I remember him saying it was so different to Formula One, but so refreshing as well. No, I could see Marcus Ericsson coming back, or possibly, possibly Brendan Hartley. Ooh, I don't, I don't think Hartley would want to come back to Formula One. Wow, you had such a good time with Tara Rosso last year. We didn't. Oh my god, it's called sarcasm. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Can I throw a name into the hat? You may. I didn't know there was a hat, but yes, okay. there's always a hat. It's always a hat. Um, what about Jamie Chadwick? No. Um, Whoa, what? What do you mean, no? I mean, yes, she's won the W Series, but why would that mean that she goes on to become you, a Formula 1 driver? You realise she's, she's now the reserve driver for Williams, yeah, right? I was going to say, she is... Yeah, but so, so, was, yeah but so, so, so was Susie Wolfe. And then when, when Valtteri Bottas got injured, they came out and said that even if, even if he can't race in Malaysia, we'd still go for someone like Sutil. Even though she also drove, she was the test driver that year as well. The W Series car is a Formula Three car, right? Yeah. And uh, Alice Powell, who I think did she come third in the championship? So she's just that. qualified fifth at IMSA in her first race. So you can't rule her out. Like she's clearly a great driver and a huge PR 
person probably has all the money from every major female out there. Also, the uh, prize money from W Series was huge. So, mm -hmm. she has a lot of money herself, and that's what Williams like a lot. No offence to Williams, they need it. But I wouldn't rule her out. Maybe not for this year, but... She needs to get some more racing under definitely, her belt, but def definitely not. Definitely not for this year. Obviously, obviously, like when I say no, what, I'm, what I mean is she she won't be in um, twenty twenty. She won't be driving in twenty twenty. If if down the line she shows herself to be a properly properly good driver at for at like at the at the standard required, then perfect. I'd love I'd love to see her in Formula One, but so far just the dub because the W because the W series is brand new. I don't think that gives her an automatic pass into Formula One. I think she, maybe, well, maybe we'll see. Them. Maybe she'll do another year and then continue test driving with Williams or maybe somebody else. I think if you get a test, if you get a test driving Williams, you get a if you get her at practice sessions, see what she's about, and if she shows herself to be at the at the required level, then I think bring it on. I'd love to see it. Let's that talk way. about Williams because we just spoke about Jamie. So let's talk about Williams because we're already there. Yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, George Russell will still be there next year. I think they love him. It, what he's doing in the car is fantastic. The way he's outdoing Robert Kubica. I know. Obviously, we, we've spoken a little bit about Kubica in the worst of 2019. Um, but even even so, the way Russell is outdoing him is quite staggering. And the fact he was so nearly in in Q2 last time out at Hungary was also amazing. Yeah, I don't know who else. I, I honestly, I don't think it's going to be Kubica, but I can't even think who else it's going to be. It depends what happens with the rest of the grid. It'll just be like, like if Alcon doesn't have a seat, he'll go to Williams. I think if Hulkenberg doesn't have a seat, he'll probably go to Williams. I think Ocon at Williams could be that. That's actually what I'd like to see more than Ocon at Renault, because Mercedes are obviously they 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 look. You can't now the way Russell is driving for the Williams team. You can't not put him in the conversation for Mercedes seat in the near future. Imagine if for Mercedes, if they had both Ocon and Russell at Williams, you'd have a direct comparison between the two. And there's obviously all this talk about Ocon, but if then Russell out, absolutely outscores, out, absolutely destroys him in qualifying and in races, you could see then Russell moving to Mercedes for 2021 instead of Ocon. Well, I think that's going to happen anyway. I don't... I personally can't see, as I've, I'm sure I've already said it like half an hour ago when we were talking about Mercedes, I yep. think that Russell will end up there for 2021, and so there's no point changing the seat. I yeah. have I have an idea for Williams, because obviously Kibitz is going to, I think, well, I think Kibitz will leave. But yeah. It's, it's, what, what are the chances of Latifi going from reserve driver to number two driver, or just equal driver to Russell? Uh strong i reckon i reckon that i reckon if they don't get if they weren't to get ocon for example i reckon they'd put the tifi in the car obviously he's tested for them this year and again i love well how I, I think i think he did quite well yeah but and obviously he's second in the f2 standing so he's, he's showing himself to be a fairly decent driver again let's not dis discount uh de Vries as well i think the problem with bringing in another rookie is that they brought in three last year which is quite a lot for f1 um, yeah, you know they brought in the top three, which I, I couldn't tell you when that last happened. Like the top three from F two, all going into F one in the same year, it, mm. it's kind of unreal. So um, I don't think there's going to be a rookie in this year, to be honest. Yeah, I think yeah, because it's again, it's, it's all changed, and they're all looking, they're all they'll all be looking to the future, and they want to make sure they get it right for twenty twenty one. I think I, th I, th I think that, that that basically sums up what's going to happen for drivers next year. It depends what teams are looking for, setting up for 2021, or just leaving it as is to make sure they've got as many options as possible. And so, based on that, I still believe that Mick Schumacher will be in an Alfa, Re Alfa Romeo next year, and I'll I'll stick with Latifi. I think I think I'll go with Latifi in at Williams because he has he has driven for them. And I just can't see Kubica carrying on. So anyway, those have been our thoughts on what the grid for 2020 will look like. It will all depend on what teams are looking at, whether they're looking to get started for 2021 or they just want to keep it simple and start 2021 all over again. But again, those are our thoughts. If you agree or disagree with what we have all proposed, then do be sure to let us know in the comments. And I think that's a good place to leave it. So Derek, Peter, if you both want, both want to say goodbye. Uh, so long. Farewell. And thanks for all the fish. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.